The Leap Air LTM 1350 has a maximum capacity of 350 tonnes at a 3 metre radius and a maximum lifting height of 134 metres. The model comes in quite a big Leap Air branded box with some nice photos of the real crane. But unfortunately there's no information about the real machine provided. There is a detailed manual for the model which has some line drawings showing the main assembly but there's no parts list or any information about how to reeve the crane. There are two factory sealed trays and the thinner one contains all the parts needed for the fixed jib that comes with this version of the model. And it's a standalone set which could be sold separately at some point. The second tray is much larger and it requires a bit more skill to cut the factory ceiling. If it turns out that you're lucky enough to have some skill then you're able to remove the lid of the tray. And inside all the parts necessary for the crane are there. So again this could be sold separately from the fixed jib. For this stage of the assembly we'll just get the crane into a road going configuration so the first thing to do is to rig up a hook. So we'll unwind some thread from the winch drum and take it down to the front end where we can feed it through the small single sheave hook. And for this simple arrangement I'm just going to then tie a knot in the end of the thread. And the purpose of doing this is to make something that will just hook into the socket that's fixed to the boom head. And this is actually quite a good little system because it replicates how it's done on the real crane. And it works pretty well as long as you've got a knot that's big enough and you just pull it a little bit tight to lodge it properly within that socket. The hook can now be connected up to a piece of thread that's already supplied on the front of the cab. But I think that's really intended for if you rig the crane with the bigger hook on the front. And I prefer it without that piece of thread so I'm going to cut that off and just hook the hook straight into the loop that's fitted to the front of the cab. And once you've connected it and wind in the thread a bit, you get something that looks quite realistic. The real crane has handrails which can be demounted to lower the headroom for transport. So to replicate this there are two sets of handrails supplied with the model and these are the ones that are used for transport. The last piece being fitted here is out of balance so it won't sit properly in the holes. But you can get around that with a piece of plastic putty on the end or if you insist a bit of chewing gum but that would be a bit mm, not nice. And that sticks and keeps the handrail looking level. So with those few simple adjustments the crane is configured for road transport. And if you've got suitable trucks it's possible to configure a convoy. First on the scene is one of the Liebherr crew. And the first truck is a ballast carrier with spreader plates and a hook. The next truck has got some of the big sections for a fixed jib. And the last truck carries the special sections. <laughs> The detail underneath the crane is excellent, there's even a very small fan visible right at the front. And the full transmission system is modelled including all of the drive shafts in and out of the transfer box. In addition to flexible mud flaps there are also numerous hoses which connect the various tanks. The tyres have got an excellent tread pattern with the Michelin name moulded in the sidewalls. And there are different wheel hubs for the driven and non-driven axles. At the front the driving cab is well detailed and includes a number plate and inside there is Liebherr written on the seat backs. The engine compartment behind the cab has got some fine mesh and there are also some tiny graphics. And there are some more tiny graphics on the end of the metal outrigger beams. At the rear there is a usable small towing hitch and the lights have plastic lenses so they look realistic. The carrier deck has got non-slip surfacing and ladders on board. And the crane cab has got more small graphics and a metal grab rail. Inside the controls are modelled well. The rest of the crane body is enhanced by small details within the casting. The separate counterweight blocks have got very sharp graphics. And the second hoist is surrounded by metal walkways. One of the really nice elements of this model is the main boom ram with its metal jacket and we'll see more of that later. The main boom has also got plenty of detailing including some metal spools. A feature of the inner telescopes is the extremely thin wall thickness so they're probably made of aluminium. There are silver pulleys in the top of the boom head and the connections for the y guy equipment don't have a good colour match. However the y guy frames are very good with high detail within the casting. The fixed jib has some very good detailing in terms of mesh walkways. But the way the latticework has been modelled does produce some visible circular connections. It does also mean that the latticework is not geometrically perfect although it is quite acceptable on the review model. Two hook blocks are included with the model and here the larger one is very well detailed and nicely made. We 
We'll look at the axles first and on the review model a couple were seized up out of the box because of some poor gluing but that was freed with some careful use of force. Each axle can be steered independently so you can replicate any steering modes but there is one issue as you can see on axle 4 here, the steering is a bit loose when you push it along. One thing that's not loose though is the independent suspension which is quite stiff and works very well. And I think it's actually preferable to have the suspension quite stiff rather than too soft. So let's begin setting the crane up and the first thing to do is to pull out the two stage outrigger beams. At the end there's a really nice detail which is the grey locking bar and that prevents the pad mechanism rotating when it's under the vehicle. To lower the pad you just unscrew it and you get a smooth faced piston but as you can see the range of movement isn't much before the piston drops out. Simple metal spreader plates are included with the model and they include usable lifting points. The pads are locked in their centered position by tiny spring clips which really test your fat fingers. With the outriggers out it's time to reconfigure the hand railing to the operational mode and it's straightforward to attach the alternative set. However on the review model one of the railings had a bent post as you see here but as long as you're gentle with it you can straighten those out and it's no problem at all. Having dealt with the cosmetics it's time to get on with the crane work. So first up we'll disconnect the hook from the loop at the front and then the boom can be raised and it's as smooth as pie. And that's because it's a metal cylinder and the locking system uses a hex key into a grub screw. This is a really nice system and the only other improvement is perhaps to make the grub screw the same colour as the cylinder jacket. Moving to the counterweight tray, it's an interesting looking part and it has the secondary winch and luffing mechanism already attached. Which is interesting considering a luffing jib is not included. It also looks like you can use the secondary winch for another hoist line because the whole of the luffing gear arrangement is removable by sliding out the pin underneath. You'd have to undo the factory reeving as well but it's all a welcome bit of flexibility. One of the alternative display poses you can have for the model is to show it self ballasting The counterweight tray just rests on the carrier deck and then you could pose it loading its own ballast. Although one thing not included with the model is the special lifting bar that's needed to lift the weights with the hook. The counterweight tray is secured to the crane by pins and it's a good idea to check that they fit first. If as in this case the pin is too tight to go in then just use a screwdriver to remove some of the excess paint from inside the hole. So to fit the counterweight tray we just offer it up and it hangs on initially at the top and then you press it down and line up the holes that the pins are going to go through. Unfortunately at this point you can't get your fingers in unless you put them in a pencil sharpener first so we're using the trick of sticking the pin with putty on the end of a screwdriver and using that to push the pin in. As you can imagine it takes years of practice to be able to line the pin up and just push it in with the screwdriver perfectly. With the tray fixed on we can then go weightlifting and load up the full amount of counterweight. The blocks are all separate so you could configure it any way you want. The model replicates the real crane in that the Y guy arrangement is removable. But before we try and fix it let's try and lift it. And it's not lifting level because the scale model center of gravity is different from the one in the real world. But it is disappointing that the main hoist winch drum doesn't really have any braking associated with it so it won't hold much of a load. One particularly nice aspect of the Y guy frames is that they have a rotating support leg. And that means that with care you can show it in the assembly position. To fit the Y guy frame to the boom you offer it up and press in the connection point at the front. And then using the special tools that are supplied you can make the connections with the tiny brass nuts and bolts that come with the model. Once the frame is connected you join up the metal guy rods. And that's followed by a very fiddly connection at the top of the boom head. This is frustrating and is liable to make you boom head with your fist. At this point one of the guy rod rivets popped apart probably because it wasn't secured tightly in the factory. But in this case it was able to be pressed back into place and it was tightened with some pliers. Once all the bolting up's done you can then raise the Y guy frames and when you've got it all up you can then tension it using the supplied key in the winch at the end of the frames. These have quite a lot of friction and they hold the tension very well. This is a telescopic crane and the system to extend the boom is fairly standard. The sections just pull out very smoothly and there's a locking clip in the bottom of the section which just locks into place and keeps a particular section fully extended. 
And when you want to lower the boom, you just reverse the process, pushing in on that locking clip first. So let's have a quick check of the other crane functions, and this one certainly rotates very smoothly indeed. It's perfectly stable and very nice to move. The other feature is that the crane cab can tilt, and it's stiff enough that it will hold any position that you want to set. And there's another small feature, which is that the access platform outside can be pulled out or retracted. Let's take a look at the fixed jib now, and it comes in a number of separate parts, so many different configurations are possible. Some of the parts are nicely detailed, but there was a problem with this particular part, which is the angle adjustment. And that's because the rivets on the slide connection were made too tight in the factory, so it needed some work to free those up. Joining the sections is generally straightforward, although the geometry is not perfect, so sometimes you have to gently ease things into place. And then the connections are made with the tiny brass nuts and bolts. Once it's fully assembled, the fixed jib is about 90 centimeters or nearly three feet long. So it's going to look impressive and it just attaches to the boom head by being hooked on and secured with four little brass nuts and bolts. There's a small guide pulley which just pulls out to guide the hoist rope up to the jib top. And when the crane's fully reeved up and extended, a very big model results, about 2.3 meters high. As mentioned earlier, the fixed jib does offer flexibility because it can be set to one of three offset angles and it just gets secured in position using pins or bolts at whichever angle you want to set. With the fixed jib at the maximum offset angle, it produces quite an interesting looking pose. In many respects, this is an excellent crane model. The detailing of the crane is really very good, but the model engineering of the fixed jib is not to the same standard. There were a few small quality issues with the review model, but once it's correctly set up, it's highly recommended.